Hello everyone, this is Bentley, and today, AGA's done. You guys requested this. The voting was pretty substantial in favor of an updated fish room tour. So, uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna goof off and babble. Let's just go straight into the first part of the fish room tour. We're gonna go through uh, what I call kind of my fry room or my grow out room. Um, it's plants where I grow a lot of fish. Has a guppy mansion. Let's check it out. All right, guys. So we're going to walk around the fry slash grow room. Um, we've got the plecos on the side here. It's the best fish I've ever had. Never move, never need to be fed. Pretty amazing. Uh, aquarium co-op towel. Feel it's a necessity. Got some random food up here. So like there's some... Uh, Freeze-dried bloodworms. This is some medicated food that we dust into a powder. I don't know if you can like tell the consistency through this, but it's an old prescription bottle that we just used to hold it. But we'll start with the Guppy Mansion. There's going to be a lot of glare. Sorry about that. It's just to get good footage of this, it has to be during why I've got daylight coming through and all the lights are on. Otherwise, it freaks some of the fish out and to return on lights at night or they just don't color up properly. So you can see like a pot of the Blue Hawaiian Moscow's up here. And... You know, the B-roll that I'll splice in will show you much better color, but you can see even from like this boy, just beautiful, beautiful blue, even with all this glare, my t-shirt. <laughs> but um, you get mostly the adults hang up top. You get some that go down, but when you come down into like the Java fern, if we look down this way, you'll see even through all the glare with me here, I'll try and kick to the side a little. You'll see just like little clouds of babies kind of all over the place. This is one of my favorite views in this tank, just over the java fern where babies and adults alike can be seen easily. You know, that's where they, they have lots of safe places down there. There's more that are going to hide up in these plants up here that'll get removed soon. They're going to a new tank that's in the display room that you'll see later. And then, of course, they'll hide, like, in the Pokestamen octopus and stuff. And the adults are usually out front begging for food out in the open swim space. So it's it creates a really good environment. There's hundreds of guppies in this thing. This shot will give you an idea of what the adults are like every day. Happy, active, and at the top of the water, always on display. Realistically, it's probably about a thousand. But it's a lot of babies. So, you know, adults, probably three, maybe 400, uh, if you include, like, elder juveniles. And in all of that, like, I don't have a lot that I would consider culls. I don't really see uh, bent spines very often. Every once in a while, I'll get what I call a color cull, where the front half of a male's body will not have the, the proper color. Um, it won't be the full blue Moscow up front. It'll have more of the Hawaiian side of the genes because this fish was a splice between a Hawaiian bred fish and a blue Moscow to create the mostly kind of cobalt blue body, but like little hints of green and purple iridescence. And there's usually some green in the tail. Um, but you can see, like, here's a great example. Here's one boy that has to come out. He's just growing up and the front of his body is not proper color. And all I do is I pull them and I remove them to a different tank. It's kind of a, an old folks retirement home, if you will. This is a view I never get tired of from the side of the tank where you get a cool silhouette action where often the guppies are just like shadows playing over the color of the plants.
And sometimes what's really funny is like uh, Guppy will show like a sky blue color instead of the cobalt, and I'll move them, and they'll go all the way to cobalt the next day. Um, so it just kind of shows if you see like a lighter blue. Sometimes it's just that fish is like chilling out for the day or a little stressed or what have you, or just not the not in full. I'm I want to breed mode, so they're not necessarily showing best color all the time. Um, let me walk through some of the plants in this tank. I had a request to kind of go over some of the rare plants and stuff like that. There's not a lot in this tank, but there are in some others. So this is all like choya wood with a ton of java fern wendelov and then a little bit of trident. You can see the trident right there and a bunch of babies and a bunch of guppies. And then down here we have two crypts nurii pahang mutated. Um, there's the offshoot baby that's kind of newer and the former, the first one I put in here. Then there's a regular crypt nurii. Uh, these are becoming less and less rare, but that one's pretty big and it's thrown some, some little offshoots. Um, my star guy used to be in here is just gone to hell. It's gotten so shaded out by all these stems up here, which are moving soon. I just got to get uh, some final plumbing work done for another tank. Often you just need to relax and enjoy the flow. Uh, this in the middle is some tissue cultured crypt petchiite pink that is slowly coming back. It got shaded for way too long, so it really hasn't done much growing. I've just got to get it, uh, get it some good light after I move stuff out and let it do its thing. But you can see like some of it here that has started to grow out a little better. You know, it's got, it's darkening up. It's getting some color. There's a Wendetii species here. It's probably a bronze. Um, you know, some of the Wendetii eyes can be hard to tell. Some of them show really perfect color all the time. Toward the back in here, you should be able to see right there, there's kind of the middle of the screen, there's some crypt pygmaea. And then the taller green crypts are crypt Sri Lanka, which are all not very common. Uh, and toward the back, there's a bunch of crypt Wendetii I read. There's some Blexa japonica here that you can see I have to divide. It's in kind of its like not as happy state. Uh, some Erio Vietnam, and then back here is a crypt uh, for Wendetii Florida Sunset. I need to just do some alterations to where it's placed, get it better light, get it better nutrients, and help it start propagating. Um, and then you've got like Pogostamon octopus. I've often said that Pogostamon octopus is among my favorite plants, and this can give you an easy idea as to why. There's Ludwigia arcuata cross repens. There's a ton of it in here. This is, um, it's coming out of the tank, which means it flowers. And you can see like little white and blue flowers on it. They're very, very tiny and very fragile. And they last like literally a day. Uh, this is a Lindernia species. This has quickly become one of my favorite things among many of my tanks. Emergent growth of plants, showing us both the underwater and above water version of the plants we love. Which is most commonly called variegated. You can see it's got that strong kind of spade pattern in the top of the leaf, and we can see all the guppies zipping around the top. Um, this is just a really cool plant. It's actually really easy to grow. And speaking of, you can see like, here's one of the flowers dead center here that's fallen off. It bloomed and immediately fell off. Like they're, they're a super short lived flower. Um, but really cool little plant, and when it does get emergent growth, it can flower, and it looks really cool, which is something I did on purpose. In the very back, there's a little bit of Cypress helferi. I kind of just want that to go, because every once in a while it clogs up my overflow, and it gets annoying. <laughs> um, but yeah, otherwise, I mean, this tank's just been great. I love it. There's some small changes I want to make. I need to chop down all of the Pocostamon octopus and change it out. Um, so that put fresh stems down, get all the old growth out. It's been in there long enough. It's something that just has to get done. I need to get a weekend where I have more time than I've had lately. Uh, a lot of, a lot of things keeping me busy lately between AGA and some other obligations and some family stuff. I've just been way busier than I kind of want to be in order to get some fish stuff done. Other than, you know, filming for YouTube for you guys. That I kind of make a priority. When I was growing up in my mother's kitchen, there was always cobalt blue glass everywhere. And these fish are like a living embodiment of that memory. 
beautiful blue color. Active, but so vibrant compared to everything else around them. Uh, so we'll start swinging through. You can see like a, a horde of various foods and uh, it's easy green. Shout out to Aquarium Co-op. Uh, best fertilizer I've ever used and basically the only fertilizer I ever use nowadays. Um, somebody might convince me to try something else, but that's kind of been my jam for a while. Uh, let's see. We will move to this tank. So there's the plants for profit tank and you'll notice it's like really overgrown. Sometimes the busiest portions of our life give us new inspiration, and it is this tank that gave me a love for emergent growth of plants. Uh, what is it? Rickia fluitan. So like you'll see it's all the way over here, and it comes all the way across the tank. This stuff coming out of the tank is a Persicaria species, India. Uh, so it's on name plant. It's a Persicaria from India. It's really neat when it's underwater. Um, you'll notice like this kind of pinky red hue on the back of the leaf. That's only when the light's shining through. If you pull it out, it goes green. But underwater, it always shows that hue. And then it has this really cool like mark. Here, actually, this is a better one. You can see it right there. It's like purple kind of heart shaped mark. It's each one's a little different on every leaf, but every leaf has it when it gets emergent. Um, so it's, it's just kind of neat. Then you've got stuff like there's, um, this is actually here, this is emergent Ludwigia super red and it just gets like green. Um, there's a ton of Rotala Atra back over there. There's some Alternanthera Renekii Rosanervig, aka variegated here. Here's more of the not fully grown up super red. Um, there's like this stuff here which is um, Tonina fluviatilis. So uh, very similar to all the Syngodanthus species. It requires soft water, needs CO2, needs high light. I've got a bunch of it here and there throughout this tank that's kind of getting shaded out. Um, there's some Pogostamon erectus toward the back. Uh, you know, just see like how, how shady it is down here because the plants are doing, just growing like crazy. There's Ludwigia pants and all right here. Here you can see just how much shade is cast to the lower portions of this tank. It's like a secret world for the Kochu Tetras to play and hide in. Um, there was some mermaid weed and I don't know how well it's doing. You can see it here, not, not as spiky as it normally is, but it's in there, it's growing. You see the Kochu Tetras. Um, and that's kind of it. I do have some rare crypts in this tank. Among the rare crypts in this tank, this view shows you just how a little sunlight can do wonders. Um, it's really hard to see them right now. So I'll just kind of go over them. There's two different species of Nurii. So there's regular Nurii and the Nurii Rosen Maiden, which is kind of the rare one. It's also known as like Nurii Pink. Um, I have Crypt Jacobsonii Pink, which is a really cool crypt. Uh, but again, it likes being shaded. That's how they grow better. They propagate faster that way. That's just the way crypts are. They don't, not very many of them, except for like, say, Flamingo or Pink Panther, like super bright light. Um, there's some Hooteroy in there. There's the Crypt Spiralis Tiger red. And then finally, there's a really rare version of Crypt Ponderditifolia, known as Rose Lips or Assay Highlands. Um, and then these, these Kochis are all kind of getting older. I've had them for two years now, and they were mostly adult when I got them. I mean, they got a little bigger, but so I'm going to start, I've started seeing some die off, just some, some old Tetras doing old Tetra things. They're not the longest lived Tetra, but they're super cool. Um, and they're not the easiest to breed. So I don't know that I'm going to try to breed them. I just got them because I really enjoyed them. And eventually I might get more. Let's move to like the fry racks. 
So we'll start up top. We have these three 10 gallons. You can see they're not all full. Um, they get a lot of evaporation just because of the way they are. None of them are heated. So they all sit at about 76 degrees. Uh, and these are for hatching rainbows. Um, in theory, I can get them hotter. I need to do some, some tricks with some circulation of heat through here. Um, and there's been some, some changes to the fish room I've just put off because I've been too busy for my own good. But we'll see over here. This is the only one that has fry in it currently. And let me see if I can get you to see some of them. I think you should be able to see one or two guys here. They're still so small, so it's so hard to see them. There we go. So you got one zipping about. Got this one down here in the middle. Uh, these are all Chalatherina fasciatos from Ungulum, which is the chameleon rainbow is what Gary Lang likes to call them. They're kind of starting to get perforated into the hobby now. Uh, or proliferated is more accurate, not perforated. <laughs> I'm sorry. English is not my strong suit. Um, the only problem I've had with them, and I, th I think I've cracked the code on what I'm doing wrong. Um, I've been losing like 80% of my fry. They just seem really fragile. Uh, I talked to Randy Reed who had these as well. And I think his adults might be coming my way. Um, he's also had a lot of struggles with this fish. The high fungus rates on eggs, very fragile fry. Uh, mine have been worse though than he has. And I'm, you know, supposed to be the more experienced rainbow keeper. So there's, there's that frustration, but I've got a little group that's doing well. Um, I kind of wanted to see how well they would hatch and grow at a lower temperature rather than like 83, which is what you're supposed to do. Um, but so far they've actually been doing okay. I don't think temperature is the issue. I think I just need to buffer with some better crushed coral than what I've been doing. Um, and just get the water a little harder. I don't think it's hard enough. It's probably only like 60 or 80 TDS. It really needs to be like 100, 120, 140. Um, this tank here, it'll be almost impossible to see them other than these two little rainbows up front, but I'm going to see if I can get you a shot. There is something magical about rainbows for me. Maybe it's because I know that in a few short months, they will be a completely different looking fish. You see back there, there's a little zebra autosynclus. That's one of a group I have in there. They're so reclusive. It's so hard for me to get them on film. And it's frustrating because they're so reclusive. But um, there's also two rainbows in here. One is a young Herbert Axel rod eye, which is the one there to the right. And then on the left is a young Melanotania from Cali Rum. There was a leftover egg that survived on a plant when I had a heater malfunction in this tank, um, different heater than the ones in there now. And I lost all my green dragon plecos and the Cali rums that were in here, which really sucked. It happened like right before I lost the zebra plecos. Um, so it was kind of a, a double whammy on me. It really kicked me in the teeth and, and thus made me feel really bad. Uh, we go beside that because that tank's really simple. These are, as you can see my label there, Chalatherina fasciatus from Cali Biru. Um, I got those from a pretty well-known breeder. If you circle, you go in the right circles, uh, named D. Brown, hence the DB there. These are really cool fish. Um, they just need to be kind of on some dark substrate and have a little more room to color up properly. But their bodies are starting like the biggest male. You can start to see yellow coming into his fins and then the body stays kind of a pale blue. And eventually they, they shift and they get some uh, reds too, I believe. But uh, D's pictures were all like blue body with bright yellow fins. So I was really down for that kind of coloration. It sounded really cool. Um, we'll move over. Nothing to report there. I mean, they're getting bigger. They just need a bigger tank so that some of the small guys can be a little more free from the big guys. Uh, they eat like crazy, splash water all over me whenever I feed them. All that kind of stuff. Uh, this tank is the two remaining Alenai Wapogas, which the male is the bigger, of, the biggest of all the fish, and then there's a little female right beside. Uh, he's been trying to spawn, so I probably actually just need to throw a mop in here and remove the two mystery rainbows out. The two mystery rainbows, I literally don't know what they are. I got them as teeny tiny pencil streaks, basically, from Aquarium Co-op. They had come in on some plants that somebody brought into the shop and donated 
And uh, Robert asked me to take them and, and grow them up and figure out what they were because he was worried the SAEs would eat the babies. Uh, and mostly he was worried because I told them the SAEs will eat the babies. Because <laughs> uh, they will. They will if they get a chance. I mean, rainbows are fast even as babies, but if they get a shot, they're going to get eaten. Um, so we go below that. And I've got lights off, but that's mostly because these guys only get so much light a day. And they get a lot of ambient. These are the Melanotania etnaensis. So this is a fish that was collected by Heiko Blaher that Gary Lang got a hold of. I got all these little babies at uh, AGA. And apparently this fish is really hard to get females from. So I've just got to monitor them and see what happens. Uh, they're too small to really see any color or anything cool. But I'll give you some decent B-roll over the top of that. And then we'll move over here. Kind of my one of my favorites, my crown jewels, if you will. In the B-roll, you'll see really good color on the two males. But these are the Running River Rainbows, the Melanotania species from Running River, uh, which is in Australia. Super cool fish. I'm really happy to have these guys. They're doing great. I really haven't had any losses. I think I lost one total fish out of my group, uh, and that was pretty early on. And the rest of them have just done great. They really just kind of need to go to a bigger tank and graduate, and that will probably happen relatively soon. Um, I've got some spots they can go to get a little more growth on them. As a rainbow fish keeper, this is an important time. Right now, you, just like I, get to witness an important moment in these Running River Rainbow Fish's lives. This is when they cross from being juveniles to young adults, when the very first bits of their true color begins to beautifully shine through. And then finally, these are the new ones that I probably just showed you guys, I guess, what, like two weeks ago on the uh, video with Gary Lang. These are the Melanotania Ewer. So these are guys that look like Goldie Idekais, but only get like two and a half inches. Super cool fish. You can see my breeding group. They're almost ready to breed as is. And uh, kind of looking forward to breeding those guys. You can see my, my CO2 regulator. The towel I used to reduce some glare in this room. So, uh, what what do we really have to report that's new? Uh, mostly that these tanks are up here to hatch rainbow babies. Um, I've had some struggles getting eggs from certain fish. We'll talk about those guys in a sec. We've got guys that are growing up here that uh, need to move. And some of them will stay so that I can try and collect mops and put babies in tens. Um, and then some fish have moved. So like we used to have the parva over there and then where the etniensis are, we had, um, like a couple of Herbert axelrod eye and some goldie eye Kai. Well, those have moved over to the 29 here. And this is of course, where we used to have the zebra plecos and temporarily in detention, my blue acara. So we'll kind of zoom in the, the boy goldie eye Kai has really been showing off a lot lately being really active, doing territory spawns. The, the Herbert Axelrod eye, who's got great color for a young fish, is just chill and doesn't care. And then the parvas that are in there, which you can see, they're kind of getting some orange in. They're just fat and happy. They're big, chunky bodies. But they're naturally kind of thicker fish as is. And all these are Melanotania species. You can see I've got another bit of that choya wood with all the, the java fern on it in here to give them some plants. And then... Um, there's a plant that I've got to transfer and get it some CO2 because it's just not converting very well from its immersed grow form, which I think is just some Rotala macrandra. Um, that's moving soon. I just had to make some space, which is this weekend, basically. I will make space for that and uh, get it moved to get some CO2. Then you can see I've got this plant here. 
I cannot remember the name of this thing. It was given to me by the photographer for the Greater Seattle Aquarium Society. And he said, like, yeah, just stick part of it in the water and let the rest grow. It's a really cool alternative to pothos. So as you guys know, like part of my problem is that I didn't have any plants to kind of cover my butt with the zebra plecos. And I did a dumb and it was completely my fault that I lost them. So I got a plant. I put it in here. And I, plant, I put some more, you know, wood-bearing plants just to make sure for the rainbows so that they feel a little better, have some cover, don't feel too exposed. Um, the black back of the tank helps them get a little color in. Uh, if I put black substrate in this, it'd be better. Eventually, what they'll do is probably temporarily move. I'll rip the sand out of here. I'll put proper substrate in and um, make this a better grow-out tank with a little bit of plants to it um, and move over probably like the running river rainbows or something like that uh, into a tank like this let them grow a little bit more before they move to something like, say, a 40 breeder. So from there, we move over. Uh, the top rack here will eventually become more tens to hatch more rainbows, just so we have uh, more space for fry, um, which it's more going to be like, you'll do three tanks of one species on this, and then three tanks of one species on this. The goal is to just get lots of fry of a couple species. Um... But for right now, you know, uh, being really busy, I'm only asking my roommate to do so much <laughs> when I'm not here. So, uh, you know, that's just kind of on hold for now. And now it's just kind of some storage and some extra tanks that are, you can see these guys are like just too long for this stand. Otherwise, we'd use them. It's just too much of a risk with how much they overhang being glass and being acrylic would be even worse. Um, and they overhang on the back about a similar amount. So we're not going to use those tanks, even though I really like these tanks. I need to build a different stand for them. Uh, and then there's some miscellaneous, like, test kits and extra parts and stuff up there. It's just kind of, like, weird storage. But here is the um, Leopoldi Angels and a lot of Ludwigia. A whole lot of Ludwigia. Uh, you can actually, let me see if the camera will focus really well up top. You can see how much Ludwigia is coming out of the top there. This is two species of Ludwigia. It's Ludwigia repens and Ludwigia atlantis. Uh, the Atlantis being a slightly more rare plant. Some cool stuff in here that I picked up from AGA. Let me see if I can uh, pull it out. So there's a couple different plants converting, but I want to show you this one in particular. This is a Staragain species called Bihar, B-I-H-A-R. You see these kind of like sawtooth leaves that it has here in the back, and then it, it's kind of like a a weird sword almost, like a you know, some kind of fantasy sword or something like that. It's super cool. Um, this is just this is one of the ways I'll convert stems. I'll just let them free float, and that lets them slowly adjust to the water in my system. Uh, it's just a kind of an easier way to adjust plants, let them grow some fresh roots, and then not worry too much about them. If we go down here, there's Kind of, it's starting to darken up in here, so, but this is Anubius nana bonsai, which is a pretty rare Anubius. It's pretty hard to find. There's some uh, Anubius white that's lost a lot of its color up top, but down low it has it. The This is a uh, Hades purple Usifalandra, um, a Kleiner Prince sword. This is another uh, Franz Stoffels, like the one in the big tank. Most of the crypts and stuff that are over here, nothing is really rare. There's like some balance that's growing out. Um, there was, there is some crypt spiralis tiger in here. There's only like one. And then some other spiralises that are growing. Nothing too crazy in this tank. Um, there is another plant. I gotta remember where it went. I had it floating in here, but basically another uh, thing I got from AGA that I have not had very much luck converting. Um, it's really been wilting like crazy on me. Which really sucks because it's a really rare Rotala. Um, actually, there's some right here. But let me see. Let me get. Sorry, I'm like trying to reach in a tank and I'm not really directing very well. So this is Rotala, um, Florida. And it's a special version that has a different leaf shape. I'd have to go. I have a, a record that tells me what it is, but it's really not been converting well. I gave some of it to Corvus Oskin. So Joel hopefully is having far more success than I am. And as long as he is, I'll get some fully converted stuff and I'll move it over 
and uh, probably have a lot more success with it than I am currently. Um, I'm trying to think of is there anything else really crazy in this tank. I don't think there is. Uh, of course, the Leopold Eye Angels are like the shyest things known to man. If I bring a camera out, they run and hide. You can see them. You can see if they get, they get the one, like the brave one that sits out front. And then uh, the rest of them sit and hide, which sucks. The Leopold Eye Angelfish are extremely shy. Just the notion of a camera usually has them running to hide amongst the plants. But with a little patience, we get to see them act in a way that only angelfish act. Sometimes the best way to coax your fish out is with a little bit of food. This allows us to see the Leopoldi for their true color. Subtle olive tones over their silver, distinct black bars, and just a hint of red in the fins. eventually you stop being so shy. Uh, down here you have the Shelleys just kind of chilling, doing their thing. These are Neolamprologus multifasciatus. Um, I don't know, my colony's like 50 fish or something like that, 60 fish. I've sold some recently to a local who was looking to do them. Uh, I just like them. They're, they have so much character. They're so cool. Every once in a while during a water change I'll level out all their sand and get their, their pipes unburied and make them just go re-engineer everything again. I know I'm a, I'm a jerk, but it's kind of fun to let them engineer something new every time. They get a little pissy. And we also don't move anything that we know has babies or uh, that has a mom like really hunkering down in it. We won't move it. We leave it alone. Um, but, you know, the ones that aren't as frequented, we'll move those around. And finally, uh, the last tank in the room is where some of the rainbows are. So this has the... Bob's uh, Bozeman eye, who the, this male, like he shows me spawning behavior, but he'll never go near a freaking mop and he drives me crazy doing it. I've been trying to get him to go to a mop and he won't because um, he's a he's a big nutty nutty doo doo head. Uh, he's just stubborn is what it really comes down to. Like he'll show all this breeding behavior and then the second I put a mop in the tank, he'll stay like the other side of the tank the entire time and never go near it. Um, even though I had my ungulums in here and you can see my ungulum male kind of showing off down there. Um, he would spawn it every day with the females, and then uh, you'll notice the females aren't in here. I had something hit the tank. I'm not really sure what. Like, no other fish had issues. It was only two ungulum females. I had been medicating, water changing, monitoring parameters. I don't know. I, I'm, my only thought is that, like, he so aggressively tried to breed that it stressed them out too much. And... Um, they started becoming susceptible to some kind of bacteria. And I lost them both, but I have 
eggs raising up, and hopefully uh, I can get some assistance from Randy because he's got his adults still. Because it's a really cool fish, and breeding it is really fun. And it's, it's one of those things, like, it, no matter who you are, you make mistakes, especially when you work too freaking much. Um, that's kind of my biggest thing. Oh, you know, uh, there is one plant in here that matters. Let me let me get it. So this, now there, it's like a crinum calamastratum, and there's this really cool floating plant. So, like, let me see if this will show properly. So there's this cool Asian water grass floating plant that I like quite a lot. But this, let me see if I can get it some light so it looks cooler. Uh, this is a boose with really nice big leaves on it. I want to see the, the one that looks proper. Hopefully you can see that. And then see this where like, depending on how you shift the leaf, it's either green or kind of a reddy purple color or this like dark metallic blue. This is um, Bucephalandra Rainbow Marble, which is super rare. It cost me a metric ton at AGA, but uh, I really like it. I'm letting it adjust to my water. Like, like I said, I float a lot of plants to adjust them to water. It's just the easiest way. I can watch them pretty keenly. They're close to light, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it'll just kind of spin slowly around the room. See just kind of where everything is. And that's kind of your updated tour of the, the fry slash grow room slash plants for profit room. Um, I don't really have a good name for this room, to be honest. But this is it. It's nothing too crazy, but at the same time, it's um, it's a lot of fun for me. And of course, the Guppy Mansion. We'll splice some B-roll in. Make it look all pretty so you get to see the, the cool stuff with the good camera. Uh, it's a lot harder to walk around a fish room with that camera just because it doesn't have... Uh, it needs to be on a tripod or it doesn't have any stabilization, so it can be really shaky. And uh, this is less shaky using my cell phone. But anyways, we'll jump back to my face and uh, we'll, we'll finish this thing out. Well, there you go, guys. I hope that you enjoyed some of the footage there. I know it's a little long just because there's a lot of tanks. And uh, between B-roll, doing a little bit of voiceover, some parts and the actual tour itself it does run a little long uh, for the second part of the tour just because of the way i've edited this i figured out a way to make some of the shooting a little more stable so i apologize it's on it's on a cell phone it's handheld it's going to be a little shaky um but i've i've got a fix for that coming so by the time you see this it will already have been here and the next piece of shooting will be cleaner but uh, I'm, I'm hoping you guys enjoy that when we go through the display room. So, lots of stuff, not enough time is really what that comes down to. Um, I hope I really would like to know you guys' uh, thoughts on how I edited this, just how, how the shooting was. Um, you know, a lot of you guys voted. It was really close between, hey, just do a voiceover and, you know, walk us around so we feel like we're right there with you walking around the fish room. So I kind of spliced that a little bit here and there. I kind of gave you a little taste of both. Um, now that you've seen kind of both styles, what did you like more? Um, you know, I, the voiceover clips are a little shorter, a little simpler, um, where I get a little more detail in the walkthrough. But if we were to do only voiceover, it would be as detailed as the walkthrough. Although, you know, edited to be a little, little less like top of my head a little more uh less ums and all that kind of stuff you know just try to be slightly slightly more professional we're not really professional here let's let's be honest but um let me know what you guys think about that i'd really love to see it in the comments for those of you who are new to the channel um one thank you so much for for taking a look and going this far it's kind of a longer video i know but if you've made it this far uh why not subscribe Maybe ring a bell. I made a promise a while back once we hit 3,000 subscribers that I would do a giveaway. So we're pretty close to that. Like really, really close um, at the time of filming this. So we've probably surpassed it by the time this video is out. And that means that a, a bonus video will come out that tells you, hey, we're doing a giveaway. But um, uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, it's kind of a weird milestone. A lot of people don't necessarily look at, they look at different numbers, but I'm weird and I like to do things strange. So... Thank you so much. Uh, let me know down below which part did you like the most? Maybe a tank you liked the most? Did you like the B-roll voiceover more? Did you like the walk around? Even if it's shaky and on a cell phone and not on a, like the nice camera with some better shots. Um, I'm still working out ways to get like 
the glare out of some of the shots. I think a lot of that is just it's hard with rainbow fish because at night, um, if I turn the lights back on, it kind of spooks them. And a lot of times it'll take forever to color up. So I'd literally have to like pre-plan, completely change my lighting schedule and get them used to light starting way later in the day and going until uh, much later when I when it gets dark around here. Because spring, summer, um, you know, light lasts for so much longer. It's a lot harder. In the winter, it's way easier because by like 5 p.m. it's dark and I can just go in there and it's only fish tank lights on. I can turn a light off as I need to and reduce glare. So the winter tour, when we get to that point, when we get to like fall, winter, a lot less glare will probably be a lot better. <laughs> we do what we can though, right? I am certainly not a professional. Uh, as always, guys, I just want to thank you so much for watching. Get ready next week. We'll have part two, the display room. I've got to get to editing and filming some of that. Um, I have like the B-roll shot, but the walk around will get shot in like two days from the time of recording this, but that's going to be a week ago at the time of this releasing <laughs> or two weeks, week and a half, something like that before today. But after today, <laughs> as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and stay awesome. Thank you for watching the video this far. I would just like to thank these people for supporting me on Patreon. They are the first seven.